some Tesla news, some stock news. And first, let me give you guys the Tesla news. So um, you guys know I own the Model 3. And one of the things that has been an area that people want to know is there's this term called phantom drain. Phantom drain is basically how much energy does the battery lose if you leave it parked somewhere? Let's just say you go to the airport and you're going to be gone for two weeks. Will you have some energy in your car when you get back because you left it in the airport? Well, someone decided to do it. One of my homies in the Tesla community, I'm going to let you hear the information he got back. Take a look at this. Yes, we get the values based on the actual distance-based range reported from the vehicle. What we do is calculate a range delta between each vehicle log. If it's negative when the car is idle, it goes towards the phantom drain total. And the sum of those negative deltas while idle in a period of time is what you're seeing in the app. So basically, they ping the vehicle every once in a while and they look at the difference in between the range remaining since the car was last pinged and if that change is negative then they add those miles to the phantom drain total miles but the car is also doing some recalculating on its own part so those miles might change a little bit and might not match up to what Teslab is showing. And that can create some errors over time, especially if there's just small changes in that recalibration over time, those can really add up. But if we look at the data I originally got from when I did the test in week one, there's between 21 on the low end and 26 on the high end of phantom drain miles per night with an average about 23 miles per day. But after adjusting that data, Teslab is showing a total of 120 phantom drain miles versus 144 originally. So that brings the average over seven days down to 17 miles, which is more in line with what I saw from the Tesla app. Week two, we saw about the same results as the Tesla apps. We saw between zero and two phantom drain miles per day with a total of six miles at the end of the week. So what does all this data mean and how can it help you out with your EV? First off, I would suggest you, if you own a Tesla, is to leave your car plugged in if you are gonna leave it idle for more than a day or two. It's actually good for the battery and what the manual recommends for Tesla vehicles is to leave it plugged in. The car will do all the charging and discharging as necessary to keep your car at whatever charge level you want. It's not going to overcharge the battery or anything like that. So, huh. fellas, I've, I've done this myself just to see how much energy my car loses. I'll leave it unplugged. I left it unplugged for like five straight days just to see how many miles really comes off the car, right? I lost no more than I'm close to what he lost. I lost like 13 miles. Hmm. That's all I lost. That's interesting. And um, just depend upon how I think I noticed that I've also done this when I had the car fully charged. Now, when, when you say I had 13 it, miles, do you mean 13 miles total or 13 miles per day? Per day. Okay. Per day. Per okay. day. Um, but I noticed when I had my car closer to being full instead of 13 miles i only lost like five to ten miles a day hmm. and mind you i probably wouldn't have lost those miles had i not had um the automatic cabin cooler on i didn't think about that so that's my bad so i need to go back and test it when i completely have the car completely off no century mode on no nothing but with the cabin cooler on the car parked outside the house and century mode on over that period when it was above 75% charge, I lost about 10 miles. When it was 50% and less, I lost about 13 a day. It was still not bad. That's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. <clears throat> Man, I'm like so far behind on them Teslas. I feel like I need a completion certificate just to be able to sort of catch up on that <laughs> hey man that, that's look that's why i'm going to start doing these videos man because i heard another mm. black person who said some stupid ass stuff he was like okay. he first of all he's driving all these miles each and every day he's blowing gas money he's driving uh, a pathfinder so he's blowing through he's blowing through mileage like it's nobody's business i mean he's eating them like Nail Carter used to eat apple pie. He's just blowing through them. And I was like, bro, you're paying 50 grand for this SUV. Your maintenance is really high. Oil chains for him cost like $110. And one mm. tire costs damn near $400. I said, you're paying mm. all this money on a Pathfinder. Why not get this car that I'm driving? 
You're not going to have to worry about the gas. You don't have to worry about maintenance. And it's cheaper than what you got. Man, I ain't messing with no Tesla. I said, why not? You just Everything you just said was an argument for you needing a Tesla. You're driving like <laughs> 80, to, 80 to 90 miles a day. Like, And you just complain about you only getting 11 miles a gallon. You got the money. And yeah. you're talking about getting another car, which yeah. I know as a financial guy, that rubs me the wrong way. You ain't even done paying for this one. It's like a 2018. But you're complaining about the mileage and the maintenance and all this stuff. But you don't want to get a Tesla that's cheaper and it's going to rid you of those bills. He was like, man, I ain't, I ain't getting no Tesla. He couldn't he couldn't give me no reason why other than I just ain't getting no Tesla. I was like, well, then fuck it. Pay the bills. <laughs> and don't complain yeah. to me. Don't complain to me about you trying to do better financially if you're really not going to do that. So so, <clears throat> so tell me this. You with you um, with you owning the Tesla, which model do you have? Model three. OK. So with this model, you're actually able to see a a uh, visible difference in you know um, in like maintenance costs or or just op just we'll just rally everything up into operational costs. Uh, so you actually really able to see a a visible difference in operational costs with only one of those as opposed to you know something else. You understand Hell what I'm saying? yeah. Okay. I, 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 my car is at 20,000 miles right now. Mm. By the time you get to 20,000 miles on any other new car, you've had to have your oil change at least twice. At the very least. At the very least twice. That's yeah. that's $80 right there. I mean, right there. And also, when you do the math, let's just say you take your best, most fuel-efficient vehicle. And let's say let's say you're getting 40 miles a gallon, and my and, and ga gas here where I live at is a dollar and fifty. I haven't what? paid. Yeah, I haven't paid wow. no money for gas, and and I just told you I put twenty thousand miles on the car. Right. So imagine if I would have had to put pay you know thirty five for one gallon. You do the math on that. I've saved all that money too, and not to mention the car self drives. It appreciates in value because of the self-driving mm -hmm. and you get updates via the internet. You're not getting that nowhere else. And you're mm -hmm. not getting a car that holds value so well and appreciates a little bit because of the technology in the car. It's just a no brainer. So let me, let me ask ahead. you if I, if I can. So I'm looking at like the, the Tesla website and I've seen on here, they have something called like the solar roof and the solar panels is, is are, are those like extra options or is that something that comes standard with their cars? I've, I don't know anyone who has a solar roof car. Okay. Now, Tesla sells, Tesla sells these solar panels that you put on your roof at your house, and then they've got these panels that are like the size of a refrigerator. Oh, uh, that maybe that's, that's yeah, what that it you, is, man. That Sorry, that's put, what it is. Yeah, that you can put in the garage and capture the energy and literally yeah. almost kick your energy company to the curb because it stores that energy for okay. you. So I thought maybe... Got, I thought maybe they had some sort of solar integration no. they were doing with their vehicles. Maybe that would help if you were like, cause something like that, I was thinking would be really helpful if you have to leave your car, you know, for a week or two parked at an airport, you know, you may not lose anything. If you have, if you're constantly just sitting there getting a solar charge all day for two weeks, it may not be a lot, but it may be enough that you don't lose that 17 miles or, or five miles or whatever it is that you end up losing. So, right. Yeah. But now the thing, the thing that the next phase for Elon is he's he's putting in like um, or he's trying to. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. There's been talk about putting in um, charger charging stations at airports, but I don't know if that's going to go anywhere because they'd be trying to tell you a new one putting anything at an airport. But right. he does put them close by the airport, so I don't even think that's that really that big of a deal, honestly. Um, like I said, I've done a whole lot of testing this thing out. So that when I give you guys this information, I've already gone through it myself. Now, how far away is, and I don't even know if they're looking at it, but how far away are they if they are looking at it from having wireless charging? So if you can have like a wireless charging uh, place at your house and you just literally pull up, get out, and that's it. Tesla is a long ways from it, but there is a company in Belgium that has that technology right now. Um, I've actually tried to reach out to him, and you know why, Larry. 
I try to reach out to them. Excuse me, they're a Dutch company. And I've okay. tried to reach out to them where they've got this, they've got a blue ball that's probably about the size of this thing right here. And it's okay. got a back to it. You stick it somewhere outside, and all you have to do is just connect your car to that thing via Bluetooth and it charges it. But the problem is it takes forever. Yeah. Um, if if you're really, really low, you're gonna be there eight hours with their thing. Now, I mean it's good because they're forward thinking. But it's still right. going to take a long time, and so I don't think I don't think that um, Tesla has it anywhere in the next five year plan to put a wireless charger. But this company does, which is why I reached out to them. But at the same time, Tesla has started refactoring, I mean rebranding their old superchargers and putting in the V three superchargers, which can get my car from empty to full in literally twelve to fifteen minutes. Whoa. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. That, yeah, I can't yeah. even charge my phone that fast. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's why I'm telling. That's why I'm telling y'all get you a Tesla or get you some Tesla stock. 